ginger beer, racking, bottling, pasteurization, and most importantly, drinking. Tasting! Woo! <laughs>
<laughs> as soon as that gets out of there, eh, we did lose a little bit. People have asked about that. How much do you lose? You lose some. You always lose some because you don't want to have those leaks in your in your beverage. Go ahead and put that right in there. We're gonna we're gonna reuse it in a few minutes for putting it into bottles, so it's all the same stuff. I know that's why I wasn't gonna put it in there. But it's fine. What I am going to do is degas. Now, this is a degassing wand. It has a bit on the end for a drill. I never use it that way. Probably because I'm afraid of splashing it all over the place. What I do is instead this. Now, before someone talks talks about oxygenation, I'm not really that worried about it at this point. There's a couple things that are going to happen here today. First, I'm trying to get the gases that we don't want, which include CO2, but some other stuff too: hydrogen sulfide, sulfur dioxide, and you know a million other gases that we that taste bad. We're trying to get them out of this. Um, oh. In case you forget, this is the one that we stopped early. This did not go to like the full 10 or 11%. I'm gonna take a reading in a minute and we'll know just what percentage it got to. I think it was somewhere around 1045 or 1050 when I pulled it. I say I think because I did it the day before we had to go to work on our day jobs and uh, I didn't test it. So I just pulled it. I pulled it, I tested it the day before. Now, if you, if you notice, this is not really foaming up all that much. I'm a little surprised. I expected to be some foam. Which means it's probably really done, and it started degassing all on its own, because they, they will do that. But as far as the oxygenation thing, those bubbles coming out are CO2 and all those other gases. Right now, there's a blanket of those on top of this, because they're heavier than water. And I won't need that anymore. Air. They're heavier than air. Yeah. That's why I'm here. And she prettied the place up. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, take a reading, the standard way. And a lot of people still are telling me, you know, in the in groups and on Facebook and various forums, oh, I didn't do a hydrometer reading. A lot of these people actually have a hydrometer and aren't doing readings, which freaks me out. I can't understand why you wouldn't, um, especially with a brew like this. It is absolutely critical to know what it's doing. I needed to know the whole way. How fast is it fermenting? What is it fermenting to? So I can stop it and leave some sweetness in there. Because remember, this is going to get pasteurized after it naturally carbonates, which you'll see that in this video too. All right, it is at 1050. I'm okay with that. It's going to be a little sweet, but based on how much trouble we had getting this down to 1050, I'm not going to worry about it. That puts it somewhere in the four and three quarter percent range for alcohol. I mean, it's a beer, you know, it's meant to be light. But when it carbonates, that's going to produce just a little bit more, maybe five to five and a half percent, somewhere in there. Really cool, nice, refreshing beer. So go ahead and put that in there. We have done some um, ginger ales before that so did go completely dry. Yeah. And with, with the pungency of the ginger and then the dryness. Um, we call them medicinal ginger ale. They're, they're a little harsh, so I think leaving this a little bit more on the sweeter side probably will make it a more pleasant drink. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hey, guess what? Hey, what? We need that paint can again. Oh, right. I need that. I was testing oh, you. Actually, past. before we get to that, I'm going to need the bottling or the degassing wand one more time. Oh. Um, I probably don't even have to, but I did another test using uh, cider using this exact same method and it didn't start up a fermentation for natural carbonation. So what I have here is one ounce for every gallon, priming sugar, it's just plain old white sugar. Um, I'm gonna put that in and remember what I said, one ounce by weight per gallon. And I just wanna mix that through. Um, the reason I'm doing it is because, like I say, my experiment, it didn't actually start up the carbonation real well. They've been sitting for over a week and they're barely carbonated at all. I want to make sure this gets a pretty hefty dose of carbonation. The way we're carbonating this is by reactivating the yeast so that they will create their little bubbles and exactly. that will be the carbonation. Yep, they call it natural carbonation or bottle conditioning is another term for it. Never understood the bottle conditioning because the bottle isn't doing anything but holding everything in. Okay, so I'm going to put this up on the paint can. 
Hopefully it won't slip out of my hand. <laughs> and all we're gonna do is go right into the bottles with these. And we're using swing top bottles for a reason. There's different ways of measuring if you've got enough carbonation. You know what I do every couple days? Pop it open. I can tell by how much pop it gives. I'm also gonna need the bottle. Yes, I know. That's what I, have to do um, I can tell by how much pop it gives whether it's ready to go or not. So what I just did is I added the bottling wand, which has this little thing on the end here that that means it'll flow. When it's sticking out like that, it won't flow. So I can put that in the bottom of my bottle and you can go all the way to the bottom with that because there should be no sediment in there. And we just start siphoning it into the bottles. And this is gonna go kind of quickly and you probably won't see most of it. As we get towards the bottom, she's tipping the jar so that there's more volume and we don't lose as much. This, there's really no sediment in it, so I could just pour this in, but I don't want to introduce more oxygen than necessary. The last bottle, I might, just because that's going to get drank almost immediately, and I should probably pay attention to the bottle. Just a teeny bit left. Sometimes. It lost its yeah, Sometimes things happen. Yep. So that's what happens when your bottling wand pops out, but it's all right. But this right here, you know what? We'll probably just drink that because if you leave that like that and try to carbonate it, it could explode and you don't want that. Um, I'm just going to take the bottling wand here and empty it out. We're going to put that into the liquid, seal that up. So we got four good solid bottles out of that. Uh, I was a little wonky with my measurements here, but it's all good. These four bottles here will go into, what I actually do is I have a very large um, pressure cooker. It's actually for uh, canning. It's a large canner. It has a lid. And I put the bottles in there and I put the lid on top. That way if they explode, they're hitting an aluminum vessel. I don't think they're going to go through that. They might pop the lid, pop the lid off because it doesn't actually seal on there, but that way they're safe. And I'm going to check them. After about three days or so, I'll start popping those just to see. That way, nothing builds up too, too much, too, too fast. And yes, by opening one up, I am releasing some of the gases, but not all the gases. So we can still tell if it foams over, it's probably past done. But my ciders were just kind of going just a little, that's all they were giving me. And that's after like a week. So I wanted to make sure I got a little more sugar in there. This is using um, the Safeel SO4 yeast. so. It should be nice and, uh, you know, it should still work for um, fermentation, natural carbonation. Okay, so that's, that's it for this part. Let these sit for several days, and we'll see you in a couple. So the next step of making ginger beer is to pasteurize it. There's a very easy method. There's a few things you need to remember. The first is you want to have a really big pot. Take your bottles, right, sealed. I like to use swing tops for this. If you use capped bottles, it's a little bit more risky, but it should still be okay. I've heard of a lot of people doing it that way with no problem. You'll notice I have some other bottles here too. These are apple cider that I just happen to be ready to pasteurize too. So I'm gonna put them all in together. The more bottles you can get in here, the better. And what you wanna do is just put them in. At this point, it doesn't really matter yet because all they're doing is filling in space essentially. And if you hear noises in the background, that's our cats freaking out for whatever reason cats freak out. Essentially, what you want to do is put all the bottles in, then start filling it with water. Now, any water is fine. I mean, you can Before use... Before you do that. Yes. How long has it been since we have started our carbon carbonation process? Too long. So, those almost, of you playing along at almost home, two weeks. if you're doing a project like this where you want to naturally carbonate your beverage, please try to schedule a time for you to have a small yeah. window to get those pasteurized. The idea was this should come out. Oh, that's interesting. There's a little skin. Not a skin, like a. That's probably. Fog. Yeah. Um, anyway, the idea was for this to come out. Ooh, it's nice and clear now, though. Mm -hmm. The idea was for this to come out at like a 5% 
then get naturally carbonated, maybe be like 5.5, and then pasteurize it so that it stays nice and low and stays sweet. Now, they've been sitting in here a while, almost two weeks. I hate to admit it. So it's entirely possible that these went completely dry and I won't know until I'm done. We're really scared about that because our friend Jeff Ford had a similar issue. And he lost all the ginger flavor. Lost his ginger flavor and that makes me super sad because we did taste this before and we... And it was lovely. And it was glorious. It was like, oh my gosh, this bubbly would be so good. So <laughs> if our hectic ske schedule mess that up, I am going to be but a look, sad panda. But look at the learning you guys get. So. What you want to do is pour water in. Now, probably not hot water at this point because there's no need, really. And we'll, well, all I want to do is put in enough water to get up to, like, the neck of the bottle. Like, you can see where my hand is in the, on the second camera. This is a six-gallon bucket. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to take three gallons or so. Maybe even more. That's two gallons, roughly. These aren't exact gallon no. pitchers, so. This, even this isn't. I yeah. think this is an English gallon, because it's smaller. But you know what? That's like just enough. That's perfect. You don't want to go over the tops of the bottles. I have it to within maybe a three quarters of an inch of the top of the liquid in the bottle. So it comes... Yeah, it's this far away from the top. To like right there. Yeah, it's fine. I'm going to go with that spot. Now we have our water level. Now, let me just explain what the pasteurization process is. Obviously, it was discovered or invented by Louis Pasteur. Probably the year can be down here or something. I don't know. That's unimportant. What it really is, is at certain temperatures, different pathogens are killed off. Now, yeast tends to die off somewhere between 120 and 130 degrees. Sometimes 140 to 150 is better, 165 is way better. So the idea is we're gonna take this water to 185 degrees. For those of you in other countries that take offense to the symbol that I just did, which for us means okay, I'm really sorry. I should be more cognitive of what I'm doing. Also, for those of you in other countries that use Celsius, I suck at that system, but you've probably noticed the little balloons popping up, giving you all the numbers in Celsius. I'm really sorry that I don't know them off the top of my head. I'm learning it. I'm having enough trouble with the weights and measures. <laughs> so give, bear with me. We are trying to do that because we realized about 45% of our audience is not on the imperial system. We just found that out recently and went, wow. And to be honest with you, the more and more we translate from- Oh yeah, the better for us. We're like, yeah, why, I'm why are it. we not metric? Yeah. Seriously, right. hello. May I have that towel? Why are we not metric? So now I have the bottles in here, right? And oh, anyway, I was, as I was saying, we get this water to 185 degrees. Then we put the bottles in. That's key. They sit in there for 10 minutes off the heat. You that, may be confused, but you already have the bottles in there. That's right. That was just to figure out That's how just much to water calculate how much needed. water we need. Yeah. Yep. So now I'm going to take the bottles back out and just, you know, set them to the side. This might seem rather disjointed at first, but it's actually a really simple thing. So I don't want to make it too complicated. This is going to go on the stove heated to 185 degrees, okay? When it hits 185 degrees, I'm gonna bring it back over here and put it on something so I don't burn the table. Then I'm gonna put the bottles back in. They are sealed. No, they should not explode. It's a gentle temperature. It's gonna raise the interior temperature of these, hopefully to 165. I don't really have a way to know without sticking something in there, but then you lose all your carbonation. Also, to some of the people who are trying to do this with the caps off, I have some bad news for you. Alcohol boils at around the 160 to 165 point. So if you did in fact raise them to 165, you now have a very lovely ginger ale soda because there's no more alcohol in there, which isn't a bad thing. It's just not exactly what we set out to do. And there's easier ways to get there. It takes a lot less time. So we're gonna stop the video here, put this on the boil. Well, not boil, 185, then we'll be back in a few minutes. Around Thanksgiving time, we had a little silly contest. I wouldn't call it that silly, but it was it was kind of silly. Basically, Jeff came up with the idea to, hey, let's just have everybody, hi Gizmo, 
sorry, um, to have everybody post their turkeys, and whoever got the most likes wins. Something silly, like a turkey baster. So I said, you know what? Let's do that. And I think it was by a fairly large margin. The winner is... Daniel, Scott, Cheryl, you are the master baster! Dun, dun, dun. I actually came up with that. It just sounds so much more wrong coming out of her mouth. <laughs> so we'll be in touch, Daniel, and uh, we'll get your address so that we can send off your lovely award. It's a major award. Maybe it'll be for g <laughs> Anyway, we just wanted to say that, and thanks everybody for participating. If you have no idea what I was just talking about, go look on Facebook and find our city steading group. Then you'll understand. Okay, so our water is at 185.4 degrees. I'm going to very carefully and slowly start putting the bottles in. Now, it's off the heat. Notice that. I'm just going to set them in gently. You don't want them to bang around or anything like that. Also, if you have chipped or cracked bottles, this is probably not a good idea. You just want to be careful. And don't knock anything over. And just get them all in there. I can see carbonation coming up, okay? That one bottle, it's already starting, so I'm just going to keep an eye on it. I don't do this very often, I'll admit. So it's a little intimidating. Kind of like when we did the boche. You just don't want stuff blowing up in your face. So what I'm going to do is take this lid, take my thermometer out, just put that on top. That way if anybody decided to blow, we should be relatively safe. But anyway, that's it for now. Now, set my timer for 10 minutes. See you in 10 minutes. 10 minutes went by. I have a glove. Nothing exploded. Yay! I really didn't think they would. But, you know, you do want to be careful. You are dealing with pressurized vessels here. So you do want to have some caution and be aware of what you're doing. That's all. We um, can see that some of them are still bubbling to the top. Yeah, I'm just going to take these guys out. Set them on the table. The ginger beer ones are all really effervescent. They're bubbling. You don't want to drop these at this point. That would be bad. Yeah, they are pretty well pressurized at this point, so they will hurt you. Another thing you don't want to do is immediately put these like in the fridge or someplace very cold. Let them come to room temperature on their own and you'll be fine. You can totally see the bubbles coming up the sides. Okay. Now I'm going to let these cool to room temperature, which is going to take a while. They're at like 150 to 160 degrees. But all the fermentation should be dead. There should be nothing left alive in these. And we should have a nice, sweet, carbonated ginger beer. So we'll see you probably in a couple hours when these get down to temperature for the final tasting. See you in a bit. In the meantime, we're going to go play a video game! So it's been a little while, like an hour maybe. And these are a little warm to the touch which concerns me <laughs> the geyser effect could happen so here's what's going to happen i'm going to try to open this but i'm going to have a towel handy and we have glass with a ice death star that's optional <laughs> you ready I see bubbles. <laughs> like, lots of bubbles. That means it's carbonated. Let's pour this thing. Ha <laughs> ha! So. <laughs> the, uh, it didn't go around the ice ball yet. <laughs> I love that. Anyway, you only got one glass. 
I figured we could share. Oh, we can share. Yeah. Smells like ginger beer to me. It's all going down now. <laughs> Love that. All right, so now it's chilled. Yeah. Go ahead and give it a taste, babe. See how it is? It really smells of ginger still. Is it good? Oh, wow. Yeah, this is fantastic. This is not just good. This is this is phenomenal. So, I had guessed that this fermented a little bit more and probably got to like a 6%, maybe 7 I might be wrong. I, I don't know that it really changed it from last still week. It's so delightfully sweet. It has that ginger flavor. I'm going to say 6 Um, It's definitely a fermented beverage, but it's not like... Oh my goodness. This is going to knock down your butt if you drink but enough of it, though. <laughs> it's such a friendly drink that I can imagine drinking a lot of it and then trying to stand up and failing. Um, this is lovely. It's lovely. Uh, Brian started brewing ginger ale specifically for me because I suffer from really bad headaches. And ginger helps with headaches. Yeah. It's and a, it's a thing. ginger is a lovely uh, thing. It actually helps but with headaches. It helps with stomach, stomach issues. Yep. All kinds of problems. Now, on her headaches, she gets migraines. It'll cure them for like an hour, maybe. And then it starts creeping back in. But, you know, I'm so bad about drinking. Oh, that's nice and clear. and Oh, this is beautiful. Let's see Very happy. Get it closer. You can see. Yeah, that came out wonderful. That's really it's nice. Pretty. Yeah, see, that's one thing we couldn't do with the old camera. You can't get that close. This one, we can go right in there. So it's like zoom, you know? This is still, I'm going to say this is probably like 80 degrees, 90 degrees maybe. But it seems to have worked. We won't really know for a couple weeks if it's truly killed everything off. I'm going to guess it didn't really get to like 165 because I had a lot of bottles in it. So there's a lot of different variables going on here. But anything over like 140, which I actually measured with the thermometer through the bottle, and I got 140. So I'm thinking the actual liquid might be a couple degrees more. So And that yeah. was with our laser Yeah, thermometer. which they aren't very accurate through um, glass and not that. If you like that and you want to get one, it's in the Amazon store. But um, a lot of people, just, just a sum summarization. When I normally make ginger beer, I use bread yeast. This time, I used SO4. When I normally make bread, make ginger ale, I use like the rind of a lemon. This time, I used lemon juice. So I changed it up and did it all on camera first time out. Okay, I probably shouldn't have done it that way. But it worked. The fermentation time was significantly longer, longer than what we're Usually used to. Usually it's like a week, so maybe two tops. This was almost three. nervous. And in discussion through our Facebook group, we, were, we weren't the only ones with that issue. Yeah. So this was a common thing. So if you try to do it exactly the way we showed you, um, and it takes longer than you're anticipating, that is why it, it yeah. will. Um, I think the combination of the lemon juice and the different yeast, it just didn't yeah. work as well as what I was used to. Yeah. Okay. If I was to do this again, like just for myself, not on the video, I would totally use bread yeast. I think I'd still put the lemon juice in. It it added this lovely tang to it oh, that yeah. was missing yeah. in a lot of my ginger beers before. You can put more ginger in. Some people said they didn't have enough ginger bite. This is good for me. We can do more. I mean, I, we've had really strong ginger beers and loved them. Now, I have heard some people um, complaining, saying that their brews tasted too yeasty to them. And I'm not getting that. That always confused me, but in this particular one, because of the lemon and the ginger and the sugars and the carbonation and the fermentation, all those things combined might make you think kind of like a bread flavoring, maybe. If you say so. Um, but I really don't think that's what it is. I think it's actually just the combination of those flavors and that sweetness that... Because if you think about beer, it's kind of... Beer is bready. Yeah, beer is bread in a glass. That is our chicken alarm. It's time to put the chickens away. It's to remind me to make sure the chickens are cooped. 
so sorry for that. I'm not. That was kind of funny. <laughs> That's the one sound that has never happened before. Um, one of several. Actually. So if you're if you're getting that, what your brain is telling you is a yeasty flavor, it might actually just be the combination of the other flavors that your brain is trying to translate and go, well, that's bready, so it must be yeasty. This is the thing that we will talk about further. Spoilers in our whiskey video. Hmm. Anyway. If you guys have questions on this, anybody that tried it and it didn't work out, go to our page on Facebook, leave a comment in, on this video, ask away. I try to answer any questions that I see. And even if we can't answer, somebody else. Might there are tons them. of people who went through this yeah. right along with us. Yeah, probably a dozen people. They did will this be right able to answer us. you, and they will probably give you the exact same answer that <laughs> yeah, we probably. would give you. <laughs> Many of them got their answer from us, so that's what. And um, if you haven't joined the group already, I know we keep saying it, but really it's it's grown huge. There's over 530 members now, and it just, we get a few more every day, and it's been a wonderful thing. Really no issues, there's no hate, there's no, none of that backbiting that you see in a lot of groups, mostly we, because I don't allow it. We really push for it to be a positive experience for everybody. We try to be Including as us. inclusive as to everyone as possible. Even with Brian's strong opinions, he will not say, no, you are wrong, unless, no, unless you're you really are wrong. actually... The only way I'm ever going to say that to you is if you're a jerk to me or if you're going to hurt yourself. That's the only way I'm really going to be like that. <laughs> <clears throat> but there's room for everyone, and we love the community aspect of it where we get to share yeah. ideas. And, Everybody's been great. There's a lot of joking around. There's yeah. a lot of inside jokes forming. So some of the stuff that we might even say in videos now, if you aren't a member of the group you might not get and i'm sorry for that it's just we're around it so much that that's become a thing for us yeah yeah not to put too fine a point on it anyway but ginger beer this was a success yay go team so we yay beer we have this from start to finish for you if you have any questions please leave them in the comments below or if you're part of the facebook book facebook group Ask them there, and that way you'll have plenty of people to help you out. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Hey, everybody. Thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you want to learn to grow and brew and take control of your food, hit the subscribe icon down below, and don't forget to hit that little bell. That way you get notified of everything we do. And if you really like what we do, consider becoming a patron. Information in the descriptions of all of our videos. Thanks, guys. Have a great day. Open? Yep. So this is the long-awaited second, third part. Yeah, second half of the second part. Let me start over. <laughs>